I hate to perpetuate American stereotypes, but I'm notoriously bad when it comes to world geography. I mean, I know what Canada and Mexico look like, as well as most of the countries that are regularly in the news, but lately it feels like I'm better at locating fictional lands than real ones. That's why I was excited to set sail with Country Discoverer, a brand new game that mixes dual stick shooting with a geography lesson. And while I'm not actually sure I learned anything from having countries thrown at me from all sides, I definitely had fun shooting them down. At least for a little while. This is not going to be a very long review, because Country Discoverer is not a very deep game. It's a dual-stick shooter where you sail around the ocean, blowing up countries that fly at you from all sides. There are power-ups, a score multiplier, and every 30 seconds you have to answer a question about geography. That's it. That's the whole game. It's a shooter where you compete for high scores and maybe, if you're lucky, learn a little something about the world's countries, flags, and capitals. Country Discoverer plays out exactly like Smash TV, Geometry Wars, and a bunch of other dual-stick shooters. The only difference here is that the aggressive game show villains and colorful shapes are replaced by countries. You'll find that smaller countries like Haiti, Kuwait, and Rwanda are worth fewer points than their massive counterparts, such as Russia, Canada, and of course the United States. The trick is to destroy every country as soon as possible, that way you can take a break from shooting and charge up the score multiplier. Aside from that, the goal is to stay alive as long as possible and rocket to the top of the leaderboard. The biggest change to the formula comes in the form of trivia questions. Every 30 seconds, the game will split the screen into four sections and ask you to name a country, capital, or flag. If you get it right, you'll earn a shield, a long telescope, a seagull, rapid fire, or one of the other special powers. But don't worry too much about getting the answer wrong, because nothing bad's gonna happen to your ship, and there's another question just around the corner. What makes these trivia questions so tricky is that you have to answer them at the exact same time that you're darting around the stage avoiding countries. Sometimes there are massive countries in the way of the answer, making it nearly impossible to get to the right part of the screen. You'll also find that the flags can hide some of the smaller countries, which can be a whole other complication. And once the action heats up, there's almost no time to pay attention to the question. I missed a lot of really simple geography questions only because I didn't even notice them in time. Yeah, the action can get that intense. The problem with this game is fairly obvious. There's just not enough to do. The background doesn't change, there aren't any bosses, and don't expect to see anything resembling a story mode. What you see the first time you set sail is what you'll always get, no matter how many times you play it. About the most you can do is earn rank points, but to what end? The only real hook is the online leaderboard, and even that isn't going to bring you back more than once or maybe twice. You would think that this concept might lend itself well to a bunch of geography-based modes, but that's just not the case. It's also disappointing that Country Discoverer doesn't have mouse and keyboard support. While I tend to play most of these games using a controller, I know a lot of people who prefer the feel and accuracy of the mouse and keyboard combination. It's pretty standard for most dual stick shooters on PC, so it's genuinely surprising to see that we don't even get the option. It's just one of the many things missing from Country Discoverer, which is probably why I doubt I'll ever go back to the shallow shooter now that my review is done. That's a shame, because there's a solid idea here. As a dual-stick shooter, Country Discoverer gets most of the basics right. It's easy to pick up and play, it has a goofy premise, and the power-ups are unique to the theme. Unfortunately, it's the lack of depth and content that keeps this game from being more than a novelty. Instead of giving us different levels, boss fights, or even mouse and keyboard support, this game tries to teach world geography by quizzing us on countries, capitals, and flags. Who knows, maybe you'll actually learn something if you play it enough times. 
But by that point, you'll be bored to tears by this paper thin shoot 'em up. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What is your favorite dual stick shoot 'em up? You know, it's it's actually kind of funny. For years I complained that there aren't enough games like Smash TV. Yet yeah, now we have almost too many of them. With so many of them out there, I'm sure you won't have any problem leaving your favorites in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back shortly with the review of Buildings Have Feelings 2. You know, I don't believe that's true. I guess I'm just gonna have to find out by playing the game. In the meantime, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.